In this video, we are going to look at one situation that arises whenever we study second order differential equations of the form ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero. So these are called linear second order differential equations with constant coefficients. The constant coefficients are the numbers a, b, and c, where a is not zero because if it were, it wouldn't be a second order equation. We also call these homogeneous because the right-hand side is zero. I mentioned the terminology here because we use terminology in differential equations to classify the differential equations. And when we classify differential equations, it helps us know what tools to solve. The particular tool that we use with linear second order differential equations with constant coefficients is the characteristic equation, also called the auxiliary equation. So for this form, the auxiliary equation looks like ar squared plus br plus c equals zero. It looks very similar to the starting differential equation. The main difference is that this is a differential equation for a function y together with its first and second derivatives. This is a quadratic expression in some number r. So r here is just a number. It could actually be real or complex. And we're looking for the solutions to this quadratic uh, expression. OK, so what are, what are those? They're the roots. So just from the quadratic formula, if we solve for the, the values of r that make this quadratic left-hand side equal to zero, we would say that the roots are negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. The thing is that you can get different kinds of numbers out of this expression, and it really comes down to what kind of discriminant inside of the square root do we have here? So b squared minus 4ac could be positive, zero, or negative. And each situation, we're going to handle a little bit differently. In this video, we're going to look at what is probably the nicest version, which is that this discriminant here is positive. When it is positive, that means that the roots are real numbers, no complex numbers, and also they are different. So negative b plus the square root of the discriminant is a different numerator than negative b minus the square root of the discriminant. Okay, so we get two real and distinct roots. In our video that introduced second order linear differential equations of this form, we actually concluded then what the two building block solutions to our differential equation would have to look like. So notably, if r1 and r2 were the two values we get from this, this root computation, then we could say that y equals e to the r1x is a solution. Let me call that y1. y2 equals uh, e to the r2x is also a solution, which means that the general solution to the homogeneous equation, I'm going to call that y sub h of x. Here I'm just calling it h for um, homogeneous, is a linear combination of these two. So some constant times the first one plus some constant times the second one. There's nothing else to really show because this is the form of the solution whenever the roots to your characteristic equation are real and distinct. So all we're going to do for the rest of this video is one example where we will start with the second order differential equation of this form, find the roots to verify that they are real and distinct, that will lead us to write down this general form of the solution where we have two unspecified constants, c1 and c2. However, uh, just to take it a little further, we will have initial conditions for our example, which will lead us to finding a, a solution that solves the initial value problem. So we will remove any unspecified constants. Here's our example of this type of differential equation. Consider y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0. We actually have an initial value problem here. So we are additionally told that when x equals 0, y is 1. And when x equals 0, y prime is 0. That's going to lead us to find one particular function that satisfies this differential equation and makes those statements true. But let's worry about that a little later. Let's focus first on the characteristic equation, finding the roots, and setting up the general solution. So the characteristic equation for this second order differential equation is going to look like the same left-hand side, but we basically switch it into a quadratic. So we're going to have r squared minus 3r plus 2 equals 0. This actually factors, but let me just set up the quadratic equation. So we'll say the roots 
our uh, negative b, so that's negative negative 3, 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4ac, so that's minus 4 times 1 times 2, all over 2 times 1. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the square root of 9 minus 8, so that's square root of 1. Because of the discriminant is 1, and that's a positive number, we know that we are looking at the situation of having real and distinct roots. So this is 3 plus or minus 1 divided by 2. So I'm going to write this as r1 is 3 plus 1 divided by 2. So r1 is 2, and r2 is 1. Okay, and you could have gotten there from factoring 2. So this factored into r minus 2 times r minus 1. We are now ready to write down the general form of the solution to the second order equation on the left. So the general solution I'm going to again use the subscript h just to say that we've solved a homogeneous problem. I just like to do that. So y sub h, a homogeneous problem solution, it's a function of x, and it's going to look like a constant. Let's call it c1 times e to one of these. I'll pick two first. e to the 2t, or sorry, 2x, two times the independent variable, plus c2 e to the 1x. So there's the general solution. Any function that satisfies y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0 has this form. Now, though, we have an initial value problem. We know that y of 0 equals 1 and y prime at 0 equals 0. For a second order equation, you must be given two pieces of information like this in order to find the two unknown constants, c1 and c2. If y is a position function, which it often is, if y is modeling the position of something over time, then this is like an initial position and an initial velocity. Let's work with the first equation first. So what I'm going to do is take this solution here, plug in 0 for x, so that's going to be 0 here and here, and then substitute in 1 for the left-hand side because we're saying that when x is 0, y is 1. So 1 is c1 e to the 0 plus c2 e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so this is really just c1 plus c2. That's what we get when we put the first condition into our general solution. For the second condition, we first need to take the derivative. Uh, let me do a little bit more down here, then I'll probably switch to working on the right. So then also, y prime of x is uh, just taking the derivative of this expression with respect to x, the two drops down, 2c1e to the 2x plus the one drops down, but that doesn't do anything. So c2e to the 1x, or just x. So that means do it right here. If I put in now x equals 0, this left-hand side should be 0 because when x is 0, y prime is 0. So 0 equals, and then putting x equals 0 into these exponents right here, it's going to turn both of these expressions into 1. So our right-hand side will be 2c1 plus c2. Oh, 2c1 plus c2, not plus 2c2. Let me step away for a minute and give you a chance to finish writing any of this down. What we now have is a system of two equations for two unknowns. So we're trying to find c1 and c2, given that c1 plus c2 equals 1 and 2c1 plus c2 equals 0. So if you'd like, you can also proceed to solve the system of equations for the unknown c1 and c2. And when you do that, you will have fun found the one solution y, which solves this initial value problem. All right, to solve for c1 and c2, you can take the system of equations and use either elimination or substitution or a matrix if you are familiar with that method. I'm going to do elimination. I think it's immediate that canceling out the c2s will work out nicely. So let me take the first equation I've written here and subtract off of it the second equation 
So we will have one minus zero is one on the left-hand side. C1 minus two C1 is negative C1 on the right-hand side and then C2 minus C2 cancels out. Okay, so just to basically rewrite this, C1 is negative one. And that tells us if we look here that C2 is one minus C1, so that's going to be two. All right, so those are the constants now, which means that the solution to the initial value problem is going to be negative one times e to the two x. So e to the negative two x plus two e to the x. And that's it. So whenever we have real and distinct roots, our differential equations are gonna be solved very similar to this. I'm just going to do one example of this. And hopefully now you feel ready to take any linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients, which has real and distinct roots and set up the general form of the solution. And then if you have initial conditions, find the solution to the initial value problem.